Hi everyone. This video and the next few videos are going to contain examples of using the method of undetermined coefficients to solve this kind of second order differential equation. So if you look, on the left hand side we have ay double prime plus by prime plus cy, which is the same type of left hand side that we've seen recently. But on the right, we now have a function of the independent variable, which I'm just going to denote here as g of x. So the existence of this g of x expression on the right-hand side turns our second-order equation into what we call a non-homogeneous differential equation. This right-hand side function is sometimes called a forcing function. I'm not going to say why in this video. We will look at applications of this type of differential equation later. So what I would like to do with this video and our treatment of the method of undetermined coefficients is focus on examples. So we'll just take examples of this type of differential equation and use the method to find general solutions and sometimes also initial value problem solutions. So in this video, what we're going to do is talk through the method. So I'll lay out a step-by-step -step procedure for how to use it. Then I will briefly justify that the form of the general solution that we write down is the correct form. And we will conclude with just one example where this right-hand side function is an exponential function. It will look like g of x equals e to the 5x. In the next few videos, we will look at, say, a constant right-hand side, a polynomial right-hand side, having sines and cosines, that sort of thing. Here's a step-by-step -step look at how to use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve for the general solution to the non-homogeneous problem. We will see all of these steps in our examples, so I don't want to get too bogged down in the details right now because as you work through examples, it becomes clear how to use this method, but let me just talk through an outline. The first step is to take your forcing function g of x and replace it with zero. That reverts us back to the homogeneous equation. We know how to solve that. Notably, what you do is you take the left-hand side and you write down the characteristic or auxiliary equation, get the roots, and proceed in the usual way. That's what we've been doing recently. Out of step one, you get what I will call the homogeneous solution, and I denote that y sub h. Sometimes in other sources, you might see that denoted y sub c for complementary. That's fine. It's just a different choice of notation. But for me, in my examples, I will use y sub h to mean the solution to the homogeneous problem. Step two is, is really the method. And what we do with step two is we guess a solution to the equation. Now you might say, wait, how am I supposed to guess a solution to a differential equation I'm trying to solve? But what you do is you take that forcing function g of x and you basically guess like a generalized version of it. So the guess that you make to get what's called the particular solution y sub p is based on the form of g of x. And once we go through some examples, you'll see it's always gonna look, or basically always looks like g of x itself. Then you say, okay, well, here's a proposed solution. Plug it into the differential equation and see if you can make it work. If you can, then you have y sub p, the particular solution. The overall general solution to the non-homogeneous problem turns into the sum of these two individual solutions, y sub h and y sub p. So we'll say the general solution y of x is the sum of the homogeneous solution and the particular solution. You should only have two constants in your general solution, and they both come from step one. So the particular solution, when you plug it in in step three and make it work, you get rid of any constants. So here we'll have constants and then something very specific. Okay, so that's a quick look at what we're going to do with our example. Don't worry too much right now if you don't understand how you're going to make step two work because we will work through several examples so that you see how to guess a particular solution. Before we look at our example, though, let me just justify that this addition of y sub h and y sub p is the correct notion. Suppose we just went through that process so that we've now written down two functions, y sub h, which should have two constants, c1 and c2 in it, solves the homogeneous problem, and y sub p, the particular solution with no constants, solves the non-homogeneous problem with this forcing function g of x. Let's show that the general solution, which is the sum of the two, solves the entire thing. So let's let y of x be the sum of the homogeneous solution and the particular solution. 
I'm going to now imagine plugging y into the entire differential equation, which is this non-homogeneous equation, ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals g of x. So we can say, uh, this is, should, let's turn that into an a. Okay, there we go, a, y double prime plus by prime plus cy. Let me now substitute in for y this addition here. I'm not going to write the dependence on x. I'm just going to write y sub h and y sub p. So this is going to be a y sub h plus y sub p double prime plus b times y sub h plus y sub p prime plus c y sub h plus y sub p. Now I'm going to expand this and collect like terms, meaning I want to get all of the expressions with the homogeneous solution together. Likewise, I want to group together all of the terms that have that particular solution. This isn't too hard to do because the derivative of a sum is the sum of the individual derivatives. So that's going to be true for this middle term and also this first term. In other words, I can write this as a times yh prime prime plus yp prime prime for the middle term, we'll have b times, again, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. So that's going to be yh prime plus yp prime plus, let me just go ahead and distribute here, c times the homogeneous solution plus c times the particular solution. I can likewise distribute these constants a and b. So let me do that. And as I write out the next line, I will group the homogeneous terms together and the particular terms together. So here, for the homogeneous terms, we'll have a y h double prime plus b y h prime plus c y h I'm switching colors. Very similarly, we just distribute a and b to the particular solution expressions, and we'll have a y p double prime plus byp prime plus cyp. So I have two groups of expressions here. This one and this one. On the next line, I'm going to write something much uh, more concise than this. So see if you can anticipate the next step. All right, here's what we need to recognize. The homogeneous solution solves the homogeneous problem. So that means when I plug the homogeneous solution into this left-hand side, it equals zero. On the other hand, this particular solution solves the non-homogeneous problem. So when I plug it into the left-hand side, I should get g of x. That forcing function. So now if you step back and look at this, starting at the very beginning, we're saying that this solution y, the sum of the two, satisfies that a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals g of x. That makes y a solution to the overall non-homogeneous problem. Let's conclude with this example. We would like to use the method of undetermined coefficients in order to solve the differential equation y prime prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals e to the 5x. So here our forcing function is g of x equals e to the 5x. All right, let's go through the step-by-step -step procedure. The first one, the first step is to find the homogeneous solution y sub h. All right, so what I'm going to do is wipe out the right-hand side, set up the homogeneous problem. In fact, let's proceed right away to the characteristic equation for the homogeneous problem. So I will write r squared minus 3r plus 2 equals 0. So that is our characteristic or auxiliary equation for this. We've looked at these several times. So the idea is you want to factor this if you can or use the quadratic formula and assess what kind of roots you have. In this particular example, 
we have a left-hand side that factors. So this is r minus 1 times r minus 2 equals 0. That puts us in the situation of having real and distinct roots, r equals 1 and r equals 2. With real and distinct roots, we can immediately write down the general solution for the homogeneous problem, y sub h of x equals a constant about c1 e to the, uh, let's use this root first, 1x plus c2 e to the 2x. All right, so that is our homogeneous solution that solves the homogeneous problem. The next step is to guess a, a particular solution. Okay, here's how you do this. You look at the right-hand side, e to the 5x, and you say, you know, that's might solve this problem, or at least a multiple of it. So let's guess c sub 3 e to the 5x and see if we can make it work in step 3. Let me make a couple remarks, though, before we do that. The first remark I want to make is that I've named this constant out here c sub 3. But when we are done with the method and we write down the general solution to this differential equation, there will no longer be a constant here. We'll have put in a value. So the only constants that we see in our general solution are the C1 and C2 from the homogeneous solution. In fact, that's really the goal of step three is, is to solve for C3. The second remark I want to make is that we have an exponential forcing function, e to the 5x. You want to just take a second to make sure that this does not repeat one of the building block solutions that we identified in step one. If this had been e to the 2x, for example, then this expression would just be a repeat of this. We wouldn't be getting anything new. I don't want to get sidetracked talking about what to do in that situation, so let's just acknowledge that e to the 5x is not a repeat of e to the x or e to the 2x and move on with this example. Okay, our third step is to take this particular solution, plug it into this equation, and see if we can make it work. We want to identify a value for c sub 3 that will satisfy our non-homogeneous problem. So step 3, plug this particular solution in and see what we get. To keep this organized, what I'm going to do is take the particular solution and plug it into the left-hand side, simplify, and then set that simplified left-hand side equal to e to the 5x and see if we can solve for this constant c sub 3. All right, so what that's going to look like is yp double prime minus 3yp prime plus 2yp. All right, I need to differentiate this twice. That's not too bad because this is an exponential function. So the 5 comes down twice, and yp double prime will be 25c3e to the 5x. Similarly, if we only differentiated it once, the 5 comes down. So negative 3 times the first derivative would be negative 15c3e to the 5x. And then we have twice the function, so plus 2c3e to the 5x. All of these expressions are similar. So we have C3e to the 5x appearing in each of them. We can just combine them. 25 minus 15 is 10 plus 2 is 12. So overall, what we have here is 12C3e to the 5x. That's the left-hand side. We want it to be equal to the right-hand side. So we want to say that this is equal to e to the 5x. So we want 12C3e to the 5x equal to just plain old e to the 5x. That would be true if 12C3 equaled 1. Now we can solve for this constant. It's going to be 1 12.
Now, as a result of steps one, two, and three, we have our homogeneous solution. We have our particular solution, 1 e to the 5x. We just add them together to get the overall general solution to this differential equation. So the conclusion is that y of x equals c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the 2x plus 1 12 e to the 5x. That is our general solution. We have initial conditions here. At this point, we're done with the method, but just to complete the example, what I'm going to do is step away for a minute, let you copy this down, and then I'll erase everything. We will wrap up by solving for the one particular version of this that satisfies that y of zero equals one and y prime of zero equals zero. But again, at this point, we've done the method. So we're done with the method of undetermined coefficients. We just need to take a minute now to satisfy these initial conditions. Now we want to take our general solution and find values for C1 and C2, which will satisfy that y of 0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So here I've written the solution that we got with the method of undetermined coefficients. Let's go ahead and to the right, plug in x equals 0. So this will tell us y of 0, which we know should be 1. is equal to what we get when we plug in x equals 0. Keep in mind e to the 0 is 1, so we have e to the 0, e to the 0, e to the 0. That means that the right-hand side is going to be c1 times 1 plus c2 times 1 plus 1 12 times 1. OK, so that's one piece of information. We need to differentiate. Let's write down y prime of x. Term by term, we will get c1 e to the x plus 2 c2 e to the 2x plus 5 twelfths e to the 5x. Let's just check I did that right. Looks good. We are told that when x equals 0, y prime of 0 should be 0. Plugging that into the right-hand side, we get c1 plus 2c2 plus 5 twelfths. This is a system of two equations for two unknowns. Let's move the constants 1 twelfth and 5 twelfths over to the left-hand sides. This is 12 out of 12. So 12 twelfths minus 1 twelfth will be 11 twelfths. I'm just going to continue this. See if we can kind of delineate between um, the equations. And now I'm going to start solving for C1 and C2 by saying 11 twelfths is C1 plus C2, whereas negative 5 twelfths is C1 plus 2 C2. You can use substitution here. I'm going to use elimination. What I will do is subtract the second line from the first so that the C1s cancel out. All right, that's going to give us 11 minus negative 5, so overall 16 twelfths on the left hand side. C1 minus C1 is 0. C2 minus 2C2 two is negative C2. So what we can say now is that the constant C2 is negative, let's see, divide by 4 on the top and bottom, we get 4 thirds. All right, we've got one constant. For C1, I think the easiest thing to do would be to take this number now and move it to the left-hand side in the first equation. So C1 equals 11 twelfths minus C2. which is going to be 11 twelfths minus negative 4 thirds. So 11 twelfths plus 4 thirds. 
And then four thirds is 16 twelfths. So 11 plus 16 is 27 over 12. So, okay, so 11 twelfths plus four thirds is 27 over 12. Uh, divide both of these by three and we get nine fourths. Take a second to check that. Now we have everything we need to write down the solution to this initial value problem. So the solution. is going to be y of x equals c1, which was 9 fourths, e to the x minus 4 thirds, e to the 2x, plus 1 twelfth, e to the 5x. All right, that wraps up this example. I just want to point out a couple things before we end this video, and that is that the method of undetermined coefficients is what got us the general solution. So it brought us here. Solving for these initial conditions was just the usual process of plugging in any initial values that we were given and solving for any unknown constants. So that's one remark. The other remark I wanted to point out is that the unknown constants C1 and C2, they were in the homogeneous solution. So they were not from the particular solution. In the particular solution, we didn't have any unknown constants to solve for. All right, in the next few videos, we will just look at more examples of solving these kinds of equations where our right-hand side might have exponential terms, but it might have terms that look like polynomials or maybe trig functions like sine and cosine.